Hey gang, Rod Cumberland, East Coast Lumberjack. And if you're liking these instructional videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You'll catch the next ones as they, as they come out. I'm going to have some, some pretty interesting ones in the next few weeks. But today I want to focus on making uh, an offset handle or what we call a crooked handle or a bent handle. And they're primarily used in large uh, broad axes that were used for hewing logs. And the intent of the, of the cook, uh, crook and the handle, and I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean. So I've, I've made a couple of these over the years, actually I've, I've made a, a fair number of these over the years. But some of the ones that I've done is this one here which basically comes down and it offsets one way. So, so the handle is still sitting uh, parallel with the handle, uh, the head is sitting parallel with the handle but it's crooked over a little bit. And that's so that you can stand on top of a log and hew down one side of it. So a lot of hewing axes, and I, I've, got a, I've got one here on my bench. So here's one from a, a good buddy of mine, Bob McLeod, and he's, uh, we're gonna hang this baby here in a bit. And I'm pretty sure this is a broad ax from uh, my hometown of St. Stephen, to be quite honest with you. So if you look down the profile of this ax, you'll see that the back side is flat. Okay, so they've got a flat side on one side and then a bevel on the other. So the intent of this is to run the, and of course, if you look down this way, you can see that it's got a, a little bit of a bend in it. Okay, now it's manufactured that way. They were manufactured that way intentionally. And the reason for it was so that they could come down one side and keep it straight while the beveled bit was actually throwing your trips out to the other side. And of course, the bevel and the uh, slant in the back allowed you to come along and make those uh, marks in the wood. Now, it just so happens that I live in an old house. <laughs> Our house is, uh, is an 1860 version, 1860 model. And uh, I've got some beams here I wanna show you. So in my old house, if you look up here, this is one of my outside beams, okay, right here. Okay, and if you look at it, you can see all along here, this, this beam was hewn, okay? And you can see where the ax is divoted out every time when it's actually hewn this beam. So that's on that side. Here it is here. Okay, so, so that's the beam there and what it looks like. So as you can tell, the old beams that were hewn out, before we had sawmills and actually portable sawmills like we have now, um, what we did was, of course, they would take an ax, a long log, and they would stand on top of it and hew it out. So to do that, they needed a, an axe that would actually follow along and do the job. So uh, the axe that they made to do that was a hewing axe. And this is what they looked like, okay? So now the intent is if you can stand on the log, or even better, beside the log, if you have it up on, on uh, a couple of props on the side, you can actually come down along the side of the, the log and take all that, that uh, curvature on the bark and everything off and square up that side. So if you have a handle, an offset handle, it helps you do that a whole lot better. Now here's, here's a real exaggerated one here, okay? But again, the whole purpose of that is so you can stand, I can stand beside the log here, and actually as I swing that ax, it'll gets me away from the log at this angle, and allows me to work right straight along and cut that off straight. So an offset handle or a bent handle is a, is a really great rig for hewing. So typically what I do, because now the problem is, if you wanna make really good quality ax handles, you want your grain straight. And all my wood, as I mentioned before, comes out of uh, trees where, the, where they're straight. So I'll grab a, just grab a, a bolt off my pile here. So here, here's a bolt, okay, and it's split off. And if you look down that, you'll see that the uh, the bolt is pretty straight, okay, the whole length of it. This one here is just got a little bit of a bend in it here at the bottom. But for the most part, my grain runs straight. I want it to run straight through the eye and straight down the length of the handle with very, very little run out. And again, I've done a, a, a few video series on this. Uh, one big one that a lot of guys liked was on run out and what you can... Uh, what you should look for in a handle and avoid in a handle. So basically, more than 25% run out, I would say, is not a good thing because that means 75% of the grains that are running on the length of your handle are within the handle. 
and only 25% of them actually veer out to cause any kind of a split down the road. So that's positive. The problem is, if that's how you secure your wood, finding wood, and typically if you want to make an offset handle, one for a, for a, a hewing axe, typically you'll take that from the butt of the tree. Now when I'm securing my wood, typically what I do is I cut that first 16 inches off and leave it for firewood for the guy that's got the logs. Because that puts that flare or that, that bend in the bottom of the handle. So of course for, for me and what I'm doing, the primarily most of the time, they're not good. But every now and then I'll keep a few of those because they do come down and they get that, that same angled flare at the bottom. So your actual grain can come down and follow, as this one does, right along with the offset so if you look at this if I can get it here so we can see it in the light because I know this light is a little bit bright okay there you can see a little bit when I get the light off it but you can see there's only there's just one two there's only two runouts here so most of the grain is bent and going with this uh, offset handle and that's what you want so I have an order now for an offset handle so I want to show you how to make one now the problem is, <laughs> he wants it in hickory. I've got some really nice offset ash that I took out of the butt of an ash. And actually, I'm going to go get some more here this afternoon. Uh, down the road, I've got another beautiful eight logs, ash logs. And I'll probably film me getting the, uh, cutting those out down there um, and, and what I do to secure my ash logs. But nonetheless, so when I look through my hickory pile, I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little low on nice but because again the last what three years I'm going to uh, log yards and buying these logs out of a, out of a mill yard so of course they've already been uh, butt sheared so uh, and I'm paying a prime price for this hickory wood right now my last 12 logs cost me over $3,500 just so you know so I mean it's pretty premium here for uh, for veneer logs but because of that, of course, I'm getting low on this wood that comes down and has a, a sharp bend in it. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you this, is I'm going to try to use it, uh, another piece of wood. Same concept, okay? So we're going to do the same thing. I, I need the grain to go in that direction. So what do I have? I have this, okay? This has got a good wow on it, okay? So you can see here this, this bolt is bent quite substantially. Now the key is, if I look down this, the grain runs pretty straight to about here, and then of course it starts bending. So what I'm going to do, the handle he wants is 32 inches long. Okay, Steve out in Ottawa has a hewing axe, and he wants to put a, a bent handle in it, or uh, a offset handle, and he wants it bent left. Okay, so looking down the, you always have to tell people, okay, if you want a bent handle, where it's bending, so it's bending left, from the butt end of the axe, okay? So when I look down the bottom, the, the, when the axe butt uh, of, the, of the head is gonna be down here, <clears throat> the blade is on the opposite side, so I wanna be down, it's going left there. So, so I, this is how the wood is gonna be oriented. Now I want it over 32 inches. So the bend in this wood, it's straight, it's straight to about here, and then it starts bending a lot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay this wood down on my bench and move this so you guys can see me. Okay, so now, the bend starts here. So, I'm going to mark that. This is where my bend starts. So, I know it's a straight handle. So I'm going to use my 32 inch cruiser because it's basically most... Uh, most hewing axe handles either come straight off the end or have a bit of a flare on the end. So I usually have to check with the guys if what they want, and this guy wants a flare. So now the other thing I've got to look at, which unfortunately, this here has a little, because wood, when hickory wood's drying, you're going to get these minor checks in the end. And if I look at this end of this uh, hickory wood, I can see I've got a, a split to here. Okay, it's, just, it's a drying check. It's not It's not that the wood is defective or anything. It's, it's as the wood hickory is so dense, when it dries, it checks on the ends. So I'm going to come in to there. So that's going to limit how long I can make this handle because I'm going to start before that check. I'm going to lay it here. So I'm going to draw out the bottom part of my handle. Okay, so this is what I want in the end. I want a, a double bit flare. So I'm going to draw that out here with my mar Sharpie marker. I'm 
both sides. Okay. And then because it's a it's a hewing axe, I'm going to use my straight pattern. And I'm going to mark off from the butt end where my 32 inches is. So that's going to come up, and 32 is right about here. So unfortunately, that little that little check down here has moved me up a couple inches, so I didn't want to do. So now most of my bending is going to be up here towards the end. Okay, so what I'll do, 32 inch straight handle, so I'm going to run the bottom of this straight. I'm going to lay my pattern on here. Hope it is a little bit more as you can see. Okay. So right here. So I'm going to bring that up straight on this side. And now it's a he has a he says here it's a three inch eye, so I need to give a big eye. So I'm going to take another one of my handles that has a bit, fair bit of a flare to it, the old Hetherington. I'm going to lay it on the top side because I want to get this flare out here to get three inches. And of course, most double bitters are at least two or three inches wide. So I'm going to start here and flare that up and bring it down along this side here. So I need a three inch opening for my eye. So wherever my little measuring tape went. I can't find out because I got too many handles on my bench. But I want to make sure I've got a that is three inches. Here it is. So I want a three inch eye here at the top. And right now I have two and three quarters. So there is enough wood here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down and make my straight. straight portion of my handle a little bit lower on the wood okay so that I can get the full three inches here so bring it up to that eye here to, to the uh, palm swell and I'm going to bring it down so that it's three inches wide the whole way along at the, at the where the eye is okay so right along here now is going to be straight and then what I have to do what you have to do is bring this one down as well okay so we're going to have more of a jump when we get up here to this end that's where our our neck is okay so we're just going to bring that up right from here okay so there so what it looks like you can see here it comes up and it takes this big bend okay big bend up here because we want to get three inches wide, so I had to bring this line down. So that I've drawn out now my pattern. Okay, so my, my pattern is now drawn out. So I've got 32 inches. The bend is up here near the top. <clears throat> so what I what I'll do next, <laughs> and if I ever figure out how to advance this video faster so you guys don't have to watch me do this on the bandsaw, all the better. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this out the length of this and then I'm going to orient my my side to side along the grain so that I get them I get the bend where I want it in the handle so stick with me so I can show you how to, that is the key to making an offset handle so you gotta hang with me while I cut this thing out to show you how it's going to work so you'll be able to watch me here in the background uh, cut this out I'm just going to do the, the two sides of it so and the other thing I will say about a hewing axe is typically they don't have a slot in them. Uh, a lot of hewing axes actually have a tapered eye. So you actually put the axe, so you can actually flip it left hand to right hand. Um, so because of that, I won't actually cut the kerf in this end where you typically would wedge it. Now, this axe may take a wedge, and I know this old axe here that I showed you, this here one does, does take a wedge. So I will actually put a kerf in that handle when I go to hang it. Um, but this one here, I'm not sure. I haven't talked to the guy enough to know whether the... And again, it's not a big deal because he can just cut the kerf when he gets it. So, hang with me. Let's put our stuff on and cut this baby out. And I'll show you because the next part is really the key to getting this right. So, bear with me. We're going to cut this out.
Thanks for bearing with me. So, now we're back to the bench. I'm going to keep this down here. You don't have to see my homely mug. So what I want to do, I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw along my lines so you can see what I'm going to do. Okay. My These are going to be along the grain. Okay, so I'm going to pick one of these grains and follow it along. So that you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. Okay. So I just traced what I did, I just traced along one of my growth rings so that you can see how the growth ring goes and then it it curves. Remember this this handle had there this handle would had a, a curve in it. So now I followed that growth ring along like that. So what I'm going to do now, when I make my back lines on here, I'm going to lay this on my wood, and I'm going to orient it. I'm going to orient it so that I catch. Mo I have very little run out along the length of my handle. Okay. So when I do that, now there's a there's a wee bit. So what's happening now is there's a little bit, just a little bit of run out down here by the, the knob, which doesn't matter. Okay, you don't want run out along the length of your handle. So most of my handle along the length of it here is right along that growth ring. So the, hand, the growth rings are straight on the majority of the handle. So there's just a little bit out down here, but most of the swing is up top here, which is exactly where I want it. Because what happens then is, as I turn the handle, as I put that offset in the handle, it's going to follow those growth rings around the corner. Okay, that's the key to making an offset handle with your grain. So I'm going to put this on here. And remember, I'm going to draw this just up to the neck. Because at the neck, I want my offset, my left-handed offset. So I'm going to draw it this way. Now, the question is, how much offset do you put on the top? Well, what I'm going to do is enough offset so that I follow my grain. Okay, so now the grain is going to be straight along my handle, along the top of the eye of the handle. Okay, so now when you look at this, and again, I'll, I'll put it this way so that you can actually see it. So now my, my handle is drawn out so that it goes along the grain here, and then it swings right here with the grain of the wood, and then the, I also go straight with the grain. So you want to make sure, again, on a, on a bent handle, you always want to orient the wood first of all. I knew my bend was to the left. So I laid my pattern down so that my, my uh, bend in the wood went left uh, at the neck of the eye, okay? So looking down at from the top, my bend is to the left. So I orient my pattern so that the axe handle is facing that orientation. So now I know my wood grain is going to go left. So then when I sit here and draw it out, I've done the same thing. I make my length of my handle go along the length. I orient it so that it's straight with very little run out over the, the length of the handle. And then you're going to get a pile of run out at the top and a little bit of run out at the bottom. The run out at the bottom doesn't matter because that's where your, your palm swell is. And then your grain run out at the top is going to be perfect because as you bend the top of your handle wood, it's going to go right along with that offset in, in your uh, the handle where you want it. Okay, so that's really the key behind how you make an offset handle or a broad axe handle with a bend in it and take full advantage of wood that has a warp in it. So if you have some some wood that has automatic wows in them or the, you know they come out of a log that's got a, a fair bit of a bend, set those aside. And then when you have a project like this, you can take the wood and make the most of your wood. You can actually capture that sweep in the wood and put it to the best use in your handle. And again, the way to do that is cut your two sides off first, lay it flat, and then orient your handle so that the most of the grain is running nice and straight with the handle. And then when you do get the sweep, because you've taken uh, 
you've made it as straight as you can along the length of it, you get quite a bit of bend up at the top, and of course that goes right in the neck where you want it to flare off left or flare off right. Okay, so that's how you do the, the handle. Now I'll finish this out so you can take a look at it, okay? And we'll, uh, we'll go back over here and, and I'll, actually, I just thought of this today, but I'll put the camera over here so rather than sitting back here watching whatever the heck I'm doing, you can see how I'm following my lines as I'm cutting this out on the bandsaw, which I think may be a, a lot of help to guys that are doing this. So one more trip to the bandsaw to cut this out and we'll be set to, uh, to finish it. So again, offset handle for a broad axe.
Okay, so a couple other things I want to mention that I did here. Depending on how close you're watching, you probably saw a few things on top. Hey, what's he doing there? He's not following the lines. <laughs> okay, so typically I'm not recording while I'm making a handle, so I can pay attention a little bit better to what I'm doing. But of course, I'm trying to get this done in under 30 minutes so you don't have to spend a long time watching this. So a few things I did is when I drew my lines on here, now one thing you'll notice, this is a straight handle, okay? So when I put when I put my uh, piece of hardwood on here that actually draws my side lines and I lay it here, you'll see that what happens is it sits up a ways. See right here? See the gap in it right here? And what happens is if you don't hold your pencil straight along your, uh, your mold, it'll travel in a little bit. And of course that's exactly what happened on my handle here is my lines went in a little bit. I knew that. So of course what I did, if you're watching me, I, I instead of following right along my pencil line, I actually come off it a little bit to keep the handle straight. And you can see here if you look down it, so this is where the bend is, but if you look at the main part of the handle, it's nice and straight. Okay, and again that's that comes from a few years of doing this thing. But uh, so I kept that straight and the, here's the line that follows my uh, and I know you can't see it with the glare off the light, but the line that follows my my uh, grain comes right down the middle, it comes a little bit to the side, comes right back on, and then of course right here with a big bend in my wood, it follows right along the, the top of it. So we've captured the, the movement of the grain in the wood, in the bent wood. Okay, and we've captured that by orienting this one here when we do our two side lines. Okay, so always orient that so you capture most of your grain, so you don't have run out on the length of the handle. You don't want run out on the length of the handle. And where you do want it, up top here, if that handle had to come straight, there would have been a pile of run out here. But of course I know I'm gonna offset it left. So when I draw that around the corner, I capture all that movement in the grain, and now my grain follows perfectly along the whole length of the handle. Okay, so that's how we do it. Now the other thing I did on the bandsaw, I did not, I when I cut, uh, my little uh, octagonals in to save me a little bit of, of rasping in the vise, I didn't do it up here. Now the guy told me he had said I have a D-shaped eye. Now depending on whether that's a left-handed or right-handed uh, hewing axe, I would have taken that wood off one side or the other, but I'm not sure. So again, the smartest thing to do is to leave it. Let the guy that's going to hang the axe put those in where he wants it. So I've left him a full three inch at the top it's totally rectangular here at the top, so he can make those uh, cuts in it where he needs. It's going to be D-shaped, either D-shaped this way, D-shaped this way. Given that the, uh, the uh, handle is offset left, likely the D is on the right-hand side, but I'm not 100% sure. So why would I bother cutting it in there and ruin the handle for the guy? Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that, and also without the, the kerf in it for him, and he can put that in when he gets it. So now all I'm gonna do is finish up the rest of the handle. I'm gonna shape this like I normally would with my spoke shave and rasps. Um, I've got a nice little uh, palm swell down here, double bitted palm swell, and I put that in, even though he, actually he did tell me he wanted a double bit, bit flare. But if I do put that on there, and the guy doesn't want it, it's easy, you can just cut it off. Because you can't put wood on, but you can always take wood off. So that, in a nutshell, and actually in 30 minutes, pretty quick, uh, uh, instruction on how to make a broad axe handle, okay, with an offset left or right, and how to take full advantage of the movement in wood. So that's what you want to save your, your, a couple of pieces of your handle bolts that you have that don't have perfectly straight grain, set them aside, use them for projects like this, where you actually want travel in your handle, and you want to capture that so that you don't have run out in your in your handle. So that's making a broad axe from the East Coast Lumberjack. Remember, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.